One of the short, short ways to conserve amphibians is to create more places for them to live in. Here in Munar, we have collaborated with Windermere Estate and its owner John to create two ponds for amphibians. Let's hear it from John, his side of the story. So John, uh, how old do you think the plantation is? Um, so my family, or uh, my father bought this uh, estate in uh, 87. Okay. Uh, and as much as I know, I think the plantation was set up uh, in 1930s uh, okay. during that time. Okay. Back then it was a, a larger piece of land with mm. three partners, about 300 acres. Mm. And then when my father was buying, we bought uh, the 55 acre plantation which is adjacent to other uh, residents. So okay. Back from 30s till now, I think we've been growing as a cattle yes. rancher. We've been talking um, for a uh, long time about, um, you know, the plantation and the management and everything. Um, what uh, changes or what, what do you see the future of the plantation to be? So, you know, I, yeah, I remember the conversation that we've had in the last three years or so. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a plantation, um, you know, uh, these days cardamom has grown about being very intense uh, in the form of, you know, both organic and inorganic nutrients, mm. uh, pest control with chemical. Uh, almost every month there are many of the estates which have gone into applying uh, pesticides to now irrigation and everything, mm -hmm. uh, which is really taken the cost really up to manage many of the estates. So uh, we were wanting to explore the possibility of moving away from it. I mean, uh, as far as I know, in our estates, we've kept a very minimal use of pesticide and probably one application of manure in a year. Uh, but with Spices Board, we're talking to Kerala Agricultural University to see alternative options of how we can minimize uh, mm. pest use, mm. uh, use soil conservation and soil enrichment with microbes and mulching, mm. uh, and then probably getting to do, um, you know, bio agents which keep uh, mm -hmm. the pest away. Like the, um, oh, the pest away. Yeah, okay. I mean, yes. we're, we're exploring the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, the... Uh, target would be to see whether we can get organic hmm. but certainly in the times to come it's a transition from the conventional ways to a more if I were to broadly say hmm. uh, a more sustainable way of how we can run the plantation run. both hmm. have yield profitability as well as at the same time um, care for the soil and the nature a little hmm. bit more. Yes I've seen that you've set up some uh B boxes oh, yes. as that well. That again, thanks to uh, 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 WTI, uh, Mr. Jose has been uh, quite generous in his help. Uh, so, you know, bees are a natural pollinator and he was saying that there is a dwindling number of mm. bees mm. in the region and possibly because of pesticide application as well. Yes. So we're trying to see how we can increase the population uh, in these yeah, parts and try and work out as how, how we could better the situation for the bees and equally for the plants yes. as well. Also for the frogs because I mean frogs eat the bees so you are actually making more food also for frogs. Oh you think so? They, oh yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is one of the ponds that uh, WTI had made uh, through its REP program uh, with Ranjit Hadley. He had done it, he and his family had done it actually. So they they did two ponds for uh, Rakapara Suda Malabaricus, the animal like gliding frog. And it all started when we found a pond, uh, the irrigation pond of the plantation where uh, the uh, individuals were happily breeding and making children and tadpoles were also really happy and we thought if we want to create more safe spaces we should be creating uh, you know more of these ponds and then they'll come down and occupy this that that's that is our aim 
so we have seen a lot of frauds i mean pseudo malabar case has not uh, yet come to the point uh, it's been only around 11 months that the ponce has been created it short of god uh, really well acclimatized with the surroundings here but i feel that it would still take time for pseudo malabar case to come in but we have uh, the miawi night frog uh, the indian bull frog um, and what are the uh, dot frogs and everyone coming and breeding here and i really want to thank uh, john right here for giving us this space it is a bit of a uh, land that he had given away for wildlife conservation so i would i would like to ask john i would really like to thank him and ask him uh, what he wants to say about it you know absolutely no thank you required here i i i'm guessing i will have to thank you for the association that you've offered us uh, it's been uh, great to work with wti the kind of advisory role that you're able to play for us barring the fact that you have the pond Uh, in terms of other practices of farming the kind of network that you are able to bring towards uh, betterment of our plantation we much appreciate the association so like i was saying you know uh, i think cardamom has got to a point where uh, most plantations have uh, such high yields that we probably today have more cardamom that we can consume and domestically uh, it needs to be exported but exports for indian cardamom are challenged by the aspect of pest residue mm. um you've had cases uh, which have gone bad for indian spice trade i mean cardamom spice trade uh, internationally so to us i feel the whole differentiation from being just a cardamom commodity uh, is to be able to differentiate in the form of how we can uh probably qualify for better exports uh, uh more sustainable and i think uh, our alliance with uh, wti and the whole frog friendly okay. estate uh could give us that opportunity creating more ponds have been scientifically proven to improve the richness of amphibians in a landscape and hence while of trust of india intends to create more and more of them in munar